Now let's go ahead and turn our attention to taxes. Remember that taxes are only going to be affecting the supply side of the market as we did in chapter number three. So this is where we're bringing it up once again. And one thing that we are interested in taking a look at is the incidence of taxation. So it describes who bears the economic burden of a tax. So who's going to be paying more of the tax? Is it going to be on the consumer side or is it going to be on the supplier side? It all depends on elasticity itself. But before we go ahead and do the analysis of the incidence of taxation or the burden of taxation, we want to go, out to go ahead and introduce a few different types of taxes. So we have four of them that we need to go ahead and take a look at. Progressive, flat, regressive, and a lump sum tax, which we'll go ahead and write down. So first type of tax that we go ahead and take a look at is a progressive tax. As income rises, income is going to tax at a higher percentage. And this is the type of tax that we would like to see in any developed economy. And this is the type of tax system that we have here within the United States. So the federal income tax that we pay every single year, it is considered to be a progressive tax. So let's go ahead and do a few examples of the progressive tax. So here, progressive tax, progressive progressive tax. And simply put, the progressive tax just says that as our income grows, we are going to pay a higher percentage of income as taxes. So as income grows, pay a greater percentage, pay a greater percentage of income as taxes, of income as taxes. So the key word here being a greater percentage. And this is exactly what we'd like to see. If you make more money, you're going to go ahead and be paying a greater percentage of your income as taxes. So if you don't know how taxes work within the United States, we have a tax bracket system. So take a look at this particular chart here, and this will tell us the tax brackets for the year 2019. They do change from year to year, but this is going to be the one for 2019. So suppose that you make a certain amount of money, you're going to go ahead and see what your taxable income range is going to be. So suppose that you make anywhere between zero and $9,700. That means you're going to be in the 10% income tax bracket. And that is mean, that means you have to pay 10% of your income as taxes. However, one thing to note is that any marginal amount that you make beyond this is going to be taxed at a, at a different rate. So there's a 12%, 22%, 24%, 32%. One common misconception, however, is, is that when you go from one tax bracket to the next tax bracket, it isn't going to be, your entire income isn't going to be taxed at the entire higher tax rate. So here, suppose if you have, if you're making $9,700 and you make one more dollar on your paycheck, so you make $9,701, that would push you up to the 12% tax bracket, but your entire $9,701 would not be taxed at the 12%. It's only every additional dollar that you make after that. So here, with that additional dollar that you made, you would only be taxed 12% on that dollar, so 12 cents in this instance. So here, we there's this common sort of misconception saying that you shouldn't accept any raises that push you up into a higher tax bracket and that's just really really silly you should always accept any raises that you're going to get in your job because it's only the marginal amount that's going to be taxed at the higher rate it's not your full income so that's just my little two cents uh, for that so let's go on and compare exactly people that have two different incomes and see exactly why we have a progressive tax system set up with our federal income tax brackets so let's go ahead and do examples with the federal income tax so example of a progressive tax is the federal income income tax in the united states so suppose that we build up a, a little bit of a table right here we have income we have taxes paid. And then finally here, we have the proportion of income as a tax, which is what we're interested in. So proportion of income of income as tax. So here are three different columns. Suppose that we compare person A, who's making $900 worth in income, and person B, who's making a lot of income, so $204,101 in this instance. So here are two people making two vastly different incomes, and we're going to notice that because we have progressive taxation, the person that is earning more income is going to be having to pay a higher percentage of their income as a tax. If you only make $900, you're going to fall in the 10% tax range. So once again, take a look at this table. 
your entire income falls within the 10% tax range. So therefore, you're going to pay $90 worth of taxes. So here, 10% of $900 is $90. So you pay the government $90. And when we go ahead and take the ratio of the taxes paid over your income, that's what we're trying to get in column number three, you get 90 over 900. So therefore, you pay 10% of your entire income as taxes. So nothing sort of out of out of a sort of unusual in this circumstance. Suppose that you make $204,101 instead. That'll actually push you all the way up into the 35% tax bracket. But remember, it's only going to be the um, uh, sort of marginal amount. So any additional marginal amount that you make in between these amounts is going to be taxed at 12%. Any amounts that you make in between these are taxed at 22%, and then so on. So let's go ahead and see the $204,101. The total amount of taxes you would pay, once we do all the math behind that, it's going to be $46,628.50. So here, a very, very big number. And once again, when we go ahead and take the ratio of taxes paid to your income, it should be a greater percentage compared to person A. So 46,628.50, divide that by our $204,000 income, and that's going to give us roughly an effective tax rate of 22.85%. So the person that is earning more income is paying a greater percentage of their income as taxes. And this is exactly showing us the progressive taxation that we have here within the United States and also other developed countries around the world. Second type of tax that we can go ahead and take a look at is going to be a flat tax. A flat tax is a fixed percentage of income regardless of your income. So a fixed percentage regardless of your income. Example of this is going to be the Medicare tax of 2.9%. So it doesn't matter what your income is, the government is always going to go ahead and take away 2.9%. You make $100, bam, 2.9% taken out. You make $100 million, bam, 2.9% taken out. So here it is a fixed percentage regardless of your income, no matter what. And internationally, I do believe that Russia has some type of flat tax as well. So any income that you earn in Russia, if you are a Russian citizen, is going to be a flat tax. So I think it's roughly about 11 or 13%. So no matter what you do, you make 1 million rubles, you make 50,000 uh, rubles, it's going to be taxed at 11 to 13%, that flat tax. Something that is very similar to a flat tax is going to be a lump sum tax. So here, take a look at the lump sum tax. Lump sum tax. And instead of being a fixed percentage of a particular income, it's going to be a fixed amount. Fixed amount of a tax. Of a tax regardless of income. Regardless of income. So here, the key differentiating word is going to be a fixed amount rather than a fixed percentage. So an example of a lump sum tax is, suppose that all of you give me $500 in order to take this class. That would be an example of a lump sum tax because all of you are giving me the same fixed amount. However, all of your incomes are different from one another. So it doesn't matter if you're earning $100, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000 in a year, you're all giving me $500 no matter what. So fixed amount rather than a fixed percentage with the with the flat tax. The final type of tax that we can go ahead and take a look at is a regressive tax. So just the opposite compared to a progressive tax. And a regressive tax is a tax that becomes a smaller percentage as income rises. And an example of this is going to be a social security tax, which is capped at $136,000 $136,800. So essentially anything that is going to be capped based on income is going to be considered to be a regressive tax because the, the income that you earn beyond this particular amount or beyond the cap isn't going to be taxed at all. So people that make more money in effect end up paying less in taxes. So with the regressive tax, as income increases, you're going to be paying a smaller percentage of your income as taxes. So here, take a look at this regressive tax. So regressive, regressive tax. And once again, this is going to be the opposite of the progressive tax. So as income increases, as income increases, you pay a smaller percentage, pay a smaller percentage of income as taxes. And the example that we saw was going to be the Social Security. 
But of course, there is a, another example that is going to be a better one for us in application because it's something that you pay every single day whenever you purchase an item, and that's going to be the sales tax. So a sales tax is actually a pretty good example of a regressive tax because people that earn more money end up in, fact, in effect paying less as a percentage of their income. So suppose that we compare two different people once again against one another, one person that earns a lot of money and someone that doesn't earn so much. So suppose someone who earns, say, $2,000 a week, that would be very nice, versus someone who earns $320 per week, versus someone who earns $300 and $320 per week, which is not so nice. So suppose that both of them, they do have to purchase goods and services to survive, and suppose they need to buy the same exact item, and let's go ahead and say they buy, what do they wanna buy? They buy $100 worth of toilet paper. So they wanna stock up. So suppose they both, they both buy $100 worth of toilet paper, toilet paper. So here, a very essential item. And here in Miami, in Florida, we have a 7% sales tax rate. So 7% tax rate. So that tells us that each of these people, because they buy $100 worth of toilet paper, they have to pay $7 in sales tax. So $7 in sales tax paid. With all this in mind, we can say that the $7 is going to have a much bigger impact on the person that's earning less compared to the person that is earning that is earning a lot more money. So what is the percentage of each of these uh, people paying in the tax in terms of their income? So for the person that is not earning so much, we take the amount of tax paid, which is 7, divided by their income, 320, multiplied by 100, and we notice that they're paying roughly about 2.18 percentage points of their income as a sales tax. But as somebody that earns the $2,000 per week, so 7 divided by 2,000 times 100, this person is only paying 0.35% of their income as a tax. They buy the same exact item, they pay the same exact amount for the item and in sales tax, but we notice that it is hurting the person that is earning uh, less money a lot more. So in this scenario, we would consider the sales tax to be a regressive type of tax. And this is the type of tax that we would ideally like to avoid in any developed country because it hurts the people that don't earn so much a lot more than the person that earns a lot of money. So four different types of taxes that we've talked about, the regressive tax, the progressive tax, the flat tax, and the lump sum tax. And you have a better idea of how taxes work within the United States with the progressive tax and the federal income tax brackets. And in the next section, we're going to go ahead and see how all these taxes are going to be affecting the marketplace. So supply and demand analysis, how does it affect supply and exactly who's going to be bearing the burden once this tax is set into place or set into motion within the economy. So a little bit more of efficiency and welfare analysis that we need to build up in our next lecture. I'll see you guys there.